Welcome to Cooking by the Book from the Allegheny Highlands Regional Library. I'm Becky Scott, a staff member at the library. Today I'm going to teach you how to make cast iron corn, which is kind of like creamed corn, but it's not like the mushy stuff that you get in a can. It's actually fresh corn that's been cooked in cream. That's why it's called creamed corn. Uh, you start, of course, with cast iron skillet. And this happens to be my grandfather's cast iron skillet. It's probably I would say 75 years old. And I really would like to know how many pieces of chicken and pork chops he fried in this skillet before he passed away and I inherited it. It's a, a prized possession even though it's not valuable, but it has lots of sentimental value because I like to cook and he liked to cook. So you're going to put your cast iron on the, on the stove and you're going to turn your burner on to medium high and it doesn't take but a minute. So as it heats and it's already getting hot, I can already feel the heat with my hand, you're going to add four tablespoons of butter. You can use margarine if you prefer. I've even done it with um, the soft margarine which has less calories and fat. Um, but today we're going whole hog. We're going to use real butter. Measure out four tablespoons which is a half a stick and I'm not good at cutting it with a spoon but that's okay. So there's our four tablespoons of butter and it Again, with the, with the cast iron, it melts very, very quickly. Before you melt the butter, you need to shock and wash at least six ears of corn. Now, if you have large ears, six ears are more than enough, and that will make you six to eight servings. If they're smaller ears, like end of season corn, you probably need up to eight. And six ears made almost, notice this is a gallon bag, made almost a half a gallon of corn. And you just dump it in and try not to make a mess. So you just kind of stir it around, okay? So you stir it around and you try to coat all of the kernels of corn with the butter, which takes just a minute. Once you get that done, you need to add salt and pepper. And I always say to taste, but for that much corn, I'm gonna add a teaspoon of salt. You can always taste it later. If it's not enough salt, you can go back and add more. You can't take it away, so be careful with how much salt you add. And then you are going to add pepper to taste. I like lots of pepper with corn. So you just mix carefully the corn and the butter and the salt and the pepper. You let this cook for just uh, probably three or four minutes, just until the corn is really heated well completely through. Notice that every now and then I am moving it around a little bit. You don't want the corn to burn. And if you're not careful, it actually will get a little brown film on it from the butter. All right, when you can smell it, and I can smell it now, then it's probably about time, we'll give it just a minute longer, but it's about time that you can actually add the cream. Now this step is another step that you can cheat on. You can use um, a half a cup of cream and a half a cup of milk. And you pour the cream in and then you add the milk and it makes a nice texture to cook the corn in. Well, I discovered by trial and error, mostly because I didn't have cream in the refrigerator, but I did have half and half. Half and half is half milk and half cream. So why do you need to use a half cup of milk and a half cup of heavy cream? Which, if that's what you have, use it. I didn't have a half a cup of heavy cream, so I use a whole cup of half and half. So you can either use a half a cup of milk and a half a cup of heavy cream, or you can use a whole cup of half and half, which is what I'm measuring out now. And in just a minute, when the corn gets just a little bit hotter, I'm going to add it. I can smell the butter. I can really smell the fresh corn. And in the summertime, when the gardens start coming in, my two favorite things are fresh corn and fresh tomatoes. You just can't beat fresh corn. I love corn on the cob, but this corn ranks right up there. It tastes like corn on the cob, only you don't have to do all the work. You don't have to gnaw it off and then go floss your teeth. Well, you still have to floss your teeth because it's corn, but you don't have to gnaw it off. It's not as bad. All right, I think that, um, again, it's about three or four minutes, just enough to where you can really smell the corn cooking. Then you're going to add your half and half, pouring it in slowly. Smells good. And again, just mix it through. Now the last step, if you want to add it, is sugar. 
Um, some people are purists and think you shouldn't add sugar to corn. Fresh corn has lots of sugar in it anyway. Um, this corn that I cut this morning was pretty fresh and smells pretty fresh. I'm not going to add a lot. I think I'm going to add about a tablespoon of sugar. It just makes it a little bit sweeter. Sweet's always good in my opinion. So there's your tablespoon of sugar and you let it cook through, stirring it. And you bring it to a simmer and you let it cook for about um, five to eight minutes until it actually gets kind of thick. Anyway, you let it cook for three to five minutes and when um, the half and half or the cream and milk mixture becomes thicker and um, evaporates mostly away, then it's done. Um, this will serve about eight people. This is, this is a good side dish. Um, it goes well at picnics. I've served it at 4th of July. It goes well. We even sometimes use it at Thanksgiving in place of corn pudding. Um, if you can get fresh corn, that's good. So this is a good hearty side dish and just about everybody I know likes corn. So there you are, cast iron cream corn. Enjoy and we'll see you next time.